Ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellencies, it is my privilege to be the last speaker of after two days of very intense work. So if there is something I have to promise to you is that I shall be very succinct. Um, it is really my pleasure to take the floor on behalf of the Italian delegation. We all feel honored by the kind invitation of His Excellency President Grimson to participate in this very important event. And actually, we are here today with a pretty large Italian delegation, including uh, representatives of uh, the central government, scientists, and enterprises. But I am sure that you are asking yourselves at least two questions. The first is, why is Italy represented at ambassadorial level and not at political level today? And the second question is, uh, how does Italy, which is by almost by definition a warm place, fit in the Arctic? Well, in seven, six, seven minutes or so, I'm trying to offer you some kind of reply. First, about our representation at uh, ambassadorial level and not at political level. Uh, just today, our Italian Foreign Minister, Federica Mogherini, took up her new responsibilities as High Representative for the Common Foreign and Security Policy of the European Union, and hence uh, she relinquished her duties uh, with the Italian government. And she will most definitely reserve a special attention to Arctic issues in her new capacity, as she already stated a few weeks ago at the, uh, her hearing at the European Parliament. And in this uh, context, let me recall also the rotating Italian presidency of the Council of Ministers of the European Union, which will also focus on the Arctic. At the beginning of next December, Italy will host an international conference on the Arctic in the Italian city of Venice. And the choice of Venice is, I think, very appropriate. Uh, it is, by definition, at sea level, and sea level is uh, affected heavily by climate change, which is very visible in uh, this uh, Arctic uh, um, region. Um, the European Union is, once and will be, a supportive, transparent, reliable partner in uh, Arctic cooperation. Let me give you just three examples of what the European Union is uh, doing in, uh, in the region. First, the European Union is uh, a very strong proponent of greater international efforts to fight climate change. Second, as a part of its regional and cross-border program, the European Union has invested over 1 billion euro in the last seven years in the economic, social, and environmental development of the Arctic. And third, the EU considers the Arctic Council to be the primary forum for international cooperation in the region and supports it very much. That's why we look forward to full implementation of the EU observer status in the Arctic Council as soon as possible. And now let me turn briefly uh, to your implicit question number two. How does Italy fit in the Arctic? And yes, I feel that there is such a thing as a special Italian relation with the Arctic. My country has a long familiarity with the North. I could mention a number of navigators, uh, but since we are in the beautiful country of Iceland, I confine myself to recalling that the first person who climbed the second highest Icelandic mountain some 90 years ago uh, was actually an, uh, an Italian. But, but let's focus on, on today. Uh, concrete Italian interests and concrete areas in which Italy can contribute to uh, the art development include at least seven major areas. Energy, science, tourism, mining and infrastructure, food and nutrition, shipping and navigation, aerospace. And more specifically, a number of major Italian companies, as well as a growing number of SMEs, are very active in the oil and gas industry in the Arctic, and they are building ships for the Arctic. Now, against this uh, backdrop of uh, economic and technological excellence, I would like to recall three specific Italian positions, which you see, by the way, uh, there on the screen. First, that we strongly believe in the economic potential of the Arctic. After all, our bilateral trade with the 
seven member states of the Arctic Council. I say seven because I do not include the United States in, uh, in, in my estimate. Our bilateral trade with them is in the region of 72 billion US dollars. Uh, that means 14% of our global international trade. Many Italians live in, in the Arctic area, and that's why we support wholeheartedly the establishment of fora focused on business cooperation in the Arctic. I would like to mention the Arctic Economic Council, which I understand met uh, during these days uh, here. And we also appreciate and support the new Arctic Business Council, which was launched by the Norwegian Shipowner Association uh, a few weeks ago in Budo in Norway, which already includes the participation of a large Italian company. Point number two, navigation. It's essential, yes. New Arctic sea routes are about to be open. Italy, uh, as an important maritime nation, has been recently re-elected in the Council of the International Maritime Organization. We support the principle of freedom of navigation, and we welcome the recent very significant progress achieved in, on the polar code. And third, uh, of course, we are in full support of the positions of the European Union concerning the Arctic Council. For Italy also, it is a very important uh, the, the prime forum for international cooperation in, in, in the region. I mentioned our conference in Venice in the beginning of December. I would also like to mention another major event, another event which is going to take place in Italy. That's the Milan Universal Exhibition next year in 2015. Some members, country, some members of the Arctic Council will officially participate in, in uh, the Universal uh, Exposition. Some other will participate on a corporate basis, and the theme of uh, the Milan Exposition will be Feeding the Planet, Energy for Life. And this, I feel, is completely fully in line with the way we want to act in uh, this region. And, as Italy, we are working on a special event on uh, the Arctic region to take place in the next spring um, in the context of the Milan Universal Exhibition. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I won't talk for much longer, but I want to say that we are going to offer you a more detailed presentation of Italian positions in the breakout session, which will begin in a few minutes after my presentation uh, has come to, to a close. Uh, the title, which we have um, chosen, speaks for itself, Italy in the Arctic from A to Z business, science, and research. We are proud to have in our delegation, institutions, scientists, and companies. Uh, I will name uh, each one of them, a few words on, on each of them. The Ministry of Economic Development uh, is represented by a senior official who will talk about energy and joint initiatives. Our National Research Council is active in, on Svalbard since 1970, uh, 1997 with um, relevant significant research basis. Uh, our Institute for Oceanography and Geophysics works uh, inter alia on uh, gas hydrate and geothermal energy. Our National Meteorological Institute works on uh, the science of measurement and in, in a nutshell they provide data improvement through data comparability both at national and international level. Our National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology um, carries out an excellent work in uh, monitoring around the clock uh, seismic and volcano activities in Italy, which is a land of volcanoes. And finally, the EMSO is the European Multidisciplinary Seafloor and Water Column Observatory, which runs a number of uh, deep sea observatories, two of which are uh, within uh, our uh, um, territorial waters. I would also like to mention very quickly the four companies which are also included in, in our delegation because they are very active, at least in two areas, which are very much relevant to our work of today. That is clean energy, and more specifically uh, geothermal energy, and data collection. So really, I feel they deserve a specific mention. Valvitalia is a leading group in the supply of equipment and components for the petroleum, water, and natural gas industry. Becromal is one of the largest manufacturers of aluminum foils. 
Uh, their headquarters is in Milan, but we also run a forming plant here in Iceland, in uh, Akureyri. Um, and rightly, because uh, Akureyri offers a very competitive and environmentally friendly energy uh, setting. Magma is a company based in the central Italian region of Tuscany, and it is also active in the geothermal energy uh, sector. And now, geothermal energy has a very long history in Italy, dating back to the 19th century. And over 26% of overall electricity consumption in the central Italian region of Tuscany is covered by geothermal energy. Now, Magma, together with other uh, companies, are now focusing very much on new technologies in this sector and are planning uh, significant investments to uh, to build some uh, 20 new geothermic power plants in Italy. And finally, Finmeccanica is Italy's main industrial group, leaning in uh, aerospace, defense, security uh, sectors. And, and uh, through their daughter companies, they also offer products and services for Earth observation by means of their constellation satellites. But I, I'll come back to this in, in, in a minute. Before that, uh, I would like to show you another slide about our vision for the future based on five axes, exchange of experience, international cooperation, scientific cooperation, economic growth, and rule of law, including the principle of freedom of uh, navigation. But on, on that, I will comment a little bit uh, uh, more in depth at our breakout session, to which, again, I invite you cordially, about to start in a few, in a few minutes. Um, but now, I would like to talk about uh, four additional um, observers coming from Italy. They are not human observers, they are satellites. They are the four Italian satellites which build up our Cosmos SkyMed satellite constellation. They are circling above our heads, even now while I am speaking, and they provide high quality images, no matter how bad weather conditions are, and regardless of uh, clouds, fog, mist, absence of natural light, rain, and, and whatever. I am very happy now to share with you some images uh, of this beautiful Harpa Center, which are taken at night, precisely last night. The resolution is very high, as you can see, one meter resolution. You can see in this uh, image here, a ship docked at the harbor, close to the building in which we are. And here, you can see the Harpa Center. As you can guess from, from these uh, images, uh, the constellation of uh, these four Italian satellites can uh, significantly improve around the clock data collection on the one hand and be instrumental in search and rescue operations on the other hand. Since the four satellites are able to locate ships everywhere in the Arctic in all weather conditions. More on that and about this. Uh, uh, constellation satellites run by the Italian group Finmeccanica during our uh, breakout session. And now, ladies and gentlemen, again, I wish to thank you for your kind attention, for your patience. I wish to thank again His Excellency the President of the Republic of Iceland for promoting Art Circle, and also a word of thanks to Director Sigridur Blondal for her invaluable and constant assistance in the wrap-up to this event. Thank you again.